Out in the middle of the Pacific Ocean, there is a group of volcano top forms and islands paradise. The rocky shore is black, for this is lava, volcash, some old, some very recent. Fresh green loveliness of the Hawaiian Islands and Chances, we get our first look from the window of a clipper plane or through the porthole of a steamer. There are more men engaged in Navy, Army, and other defense activities than in any other occupation. Pearl Harbor, about 12 miles from Honolulu, is our most powerful naval base. About 30 miles away is the largest of our Army posts. This newspaper map shows that Hawaii lies about the same distance from four of the Earth's five continents. Here at the center of all the Pacific trade routes, Japan struck without warning on that ever to be remembered black Sunday morning. The United States soldiers and sailors have long been a familiar sight in Honolulu's busy streets. Here is a great melting pot where the peoples of all meet on equal terms and enjoy the pleasure of democratic freedom that prevails on the North American. Food native Hawaiian is a decided minority. They make up only 6% of the population. White people of many nationalities make up roughly a third. The Japanese number almost as many. Koreans are plentiful. Their people back home in Asia have tasted the blood and gall of Japanese invasions. But here, under the stars and stripes, all men are free to believe and to worship according to their own conscience. Here we see Chinese taught in fine public schools by American-trained Japanese school teachers. Most of the retail trade, especially in food and services, is in the hands of the Japanese. They have an important stake in the prosperity and property of the islands and they enjoy a far higher social status and much broader civil rights than they possibly could in Japan. The attitude of this large group is an important factor in Hawaii's future. Young American-born Japanese look at life rather differently than do their elders, and sharp conflict between the old ideas and the new were noticed long before the war broke out. The commercial fisheries of Hawaii are also largely in Japanese hands. The fishermen go out to sea in small power boats and return with important cargoes of tuna and other harvest of the sea. Unfortunately for our national interests, though, such boats may also have carried information to enemy warships about our defense conditions. On the rocky shores, the native Hawaiians still get their food from the sea just as their Polynesian ancestors did for many centuries. The water here fairly teems with marine life. Many of the fish are so brilliantly colored that they can readily be seen when they appear in the shallow water. So the native fisherman prepares the net that he has made himself, just as his great-grandfather did. He coils it just so for on his skill will depend whether his family is going to eat tonight. Out in the water, he is careful not to disturb his prey. He poises his net, and then he casts. Carefully, the net is drawn to shore, and the colorful catch is examined. Along the rocky shore are many varieties of brilliantly colored fish. Here's a man who seems to be taking a bath, but he's really a fisherman too. He has to be quicker than the fish that he's trying to spear, and he is too, otherwise he would not eat. And here is his catch, not very much, but enough to satisfy him, and tomorrow he'll get more. Aside fish, the Hawaiian natives live on the products of the forest, the national dish, called poi, is pounded from the root of the taro plant. Good poi is stiff like this. When it can be eaten with two fingers, it's called two-finger poi. The non-natives, Asiatics or whites, eat their own types of food. Much of it is raised by Korean and Chinese farmers, but in quantities quite insufficient. 
The island of Oahu raises only 15% of the food needed to sustain its people. The rest has to be imported. So strong efforts are made to encourage more and more food production right on the island. There are ranches, like this ranch, that run a thousand or more head of cattle. They are herded by real cowboys that would be a credit to any Wild West rodeo. The chief cash crop of the islands is sugar. It brings in a hundred million dollars each year and provides employment for tens of thousands of field workers. This fire is no accident. When the cane is ready for harvest, the leaves are burned off by means of carefully controlled fires that redden the skies by day and night. The cane itself is so full of juice that it will not burn. To raise sugar takes a lot of money to plant, fertilize, irrigate, and combat insect pests. It takes machinery and portable railroads, too, to harvest and move the cane to the mill. In some cases, the cane can be floated down from the high, steep hillsides in great flumes. It takes a large number of laborers also to produce sugar. Chinese, South Sea Islanders, Portuguese, Japanese, Russians, Puerto Ricans, Filipinos. They were recruited in turn and brought in wave after wave from their homelands far away. The juice is pressed from the cane in modern mills and the raw sugar shipped mostly to our mainland. The third largest industry of the islands is the growing and canning of the pineapple. Introduced over a century ago, it has come into prominence as a commercial crop within the last 25 years. The field hands are chiefly Filipinos, and they not only harvest the fruit as we see here, but they plant, mulch, cultivate, and protect it from insect enemies. As a fresh fruit, it glutted and almost destroyed the local market. But the development of the canneries has brought it to the point where it accounts for about one quarter of income. What is often called Hawaii's fourth largest industry is the tourist trade. A cordial musical welcome greets the approaching passenger boat. A garland of flowers called lei is placed around each tourist's neck as a symbol of welcome. These lei do not grow in ready-made rings. Each consists of hundreds of ginger blossoms and hibiscus, painstakingly gathered and strung together by women and children. Hawaii is a flower lover's paradise, with countless species of blazing beauty and ferns that grow as high as trees. These are particularly noteworthy in the Hawaiian National Park, where the chief attraction among the many awesome sites is the great live volcano of Kilauea. This volcano is very much alive, and the National Park Service, which administers the area, warns visitors to watch their step when near any of the countless cracks through which the Earth's inner vapors come up through the surface. One attraction that every visitor remembers is the graceful hula. This national dance is a rhythmic interpretation of the Hawaiian's relationship to nature. It tells of the swaying of the waves and of palm trees bending in the wind. In the olden days, young girls were consecrated as temple dancers, and the hula was their ritual. Nowadays, too, the girl dancers start very young. Here on the famous beach at Waikiki, we see the mixture of races that are so distinctive of Hawaii. It is not hard to trace Chinese, Japanese, Hawaiian, and many other origins and combinations among these colorful young Americans. For centuries, the outrigger canoes were the only means of transportation, and in them, the early settlers of these islands traveled many hundreds of miles across the chartless ocean. It is key to ride the great combing waves and to rush swiftly toward the beach. It takes much more skill and a fine sense of balance to ride a surfboard through these waves 
but it is not true that only a native can learn the trick. That girl in the white suit is doing pretty well, and she has, it's not nearly as easy as it looks. But the experts rush by old Diamond Headed Express train speed. This is a beautiful, stirring sight, especially when caught by the slow motion camera. Custom decrees that we throw overboard our colorful lay as we leave the harbor. If it floats back to shore, it means, we're told, that we too shall return someday to lovely Hawaii. The flag that first entered this harbor in 1789 now has its home here. The real Hawaii, land of volcanoes and flowers, soldiers, sailors, plantations, and free American people ever calls us back to.